Hey there. Uh, today we are going to take a look at pointers. Um, this can be a very complicated topic in if you haven't uh, ever seen it before and if you're not really comfortable with the idea, but my hope is that through some of the examples I'm going to go through today, and particularly use of pythontutor.com, I'm hoping that we can make learning pointers to be not as hard as it can be. Uh, so to start off, we're going to show how to make pointers work. We're going to write a program with two variables, i, and an, an integer initialized to 12, p1, a pointer to an integer. We're going to use p1 to point to i, and use p1 to change i from 12 to 24. So this isn't going to be too long, um, but if you're not familiar with pointers, it can be kind of tricky sometimes to think about. So we're going to start with two variables, i and p1. So we have int i, which is supposed to be 12, it's the start, and int p1, which is a pointer. And so for a pointer, you need to use an asterisk to indicate that this is a pointer variable and not just a regular integer. Um, now, the idea behind a pointer is that it points to a place in memory. So when I compile and run this program, i is basically um, the label, the address in some sense. No, I guess not address, but the label of a block of memory in your computer. And in that block of memory, we're going to say the number 12 is there. Now, how do you actually get to that block in memory? Well, you can use a pointer to reference it. You can say, you know what? I want to take where i is in memory. And the way that you do that is using ampersand. This references the address of where this block is in memory that stores the number 12. And I want my pointer to point to that. So I can say, hey, um, you literally, you can think of it if you want as an arrow that just says, this is where the data is that I'm concerned with. So I would say p1 is given the address of i. And what this means is that p1 now points to i, which means that if I make modifications to the thing at p1, so here when I'm doing um, asterisk p1, this doesn't mean make a new pointer variable or something like that. It means um, this is a dereferencing operator. It means go to p1 and change that value to 24. Um, now, let's show this working in Python Tutor because I feel like that's the, really the best place to learn about pointers, just bar none. Okay, uh, C++ right here. So it's a very short program, it's just four lines, but it's really important to see what's going on here. So um, you'll see over here that in my uh, main program, I have space for I and I have space for P1. Remember P1, even though it's a pointer, you can see it's labeled pointer here. Um, is also a, a variable, meaning it also has a little block in memory that takes up some amount of space. So when I set i to be 12, I'm telling the computer, okay, go to this little block that you've reserved for the variable i and put the number 12 in it. Um, now, p1 is a pointer, and when I initialize it, um, I'm not giving it a value right away. So for now, it's got a little question mark, because you know who knows what data was in that block of memory that I've already set aside. But in this line here, p1 equals the address of i. What I'm saying is I want p1 to be this. Literally, you can think of it as an arrow that points to the value of i. So now when I change what's at p1, into 24, it says this, you can think of this um, asterisk as follow the arrow. So I go from, I go here, I follow the arrow, and over here I change that into 24. And that's the, the most basic pointer example that I can come up with, where at least you can kind of see what's going on here. And we're gonna do much trickier ones, but this is definitely a place to start. My strong recommendation, use pythontutor.com. It's a great place to, to practice seeing exactly how data gets manipulated, especially when these pointers start to get kind of out of control, which they will, it's only a matter of time. So then we'll try the next exercise. Okay, next exercise is create two pointers of the same type. What is the difference between these two lines of code and how do they? Ch how does this change if they are different types? Well, let's, let's try it out. So two pointers of the same type. Well, I got P1 already. Let's make another one, P2. Okay, uh, what is the difference between these, the following? Well, let's, let's try this out. Um, so let's make another variable, we'll call it J, and that's gonna be 100, just for fun. And we're going to make p2 point to j. Just so that at the beginning of this program we have uh, some initial values for i, j, p1, and p2. 
Uh, so let's put this actually over here as well. Uh, yeah, there we go. So I guess I have to I have to rewrite this a little bit because I want to declare that p1 is a pointer variable, so I need the asterisk here, and I want that to be equal to the um, the ampersand. The other way that you would have to do this if you're doing this in two lines is if you wanted to declare your pointer p2, uh, let you do it like that, and then if you want to point that to j, in this line you wouldn't use the um, the asterisk because what that would mean is you want to follow the arrow from p2 and change that uh, what's in that box to be this address. And that's not what I want. I want to just make the arrow go where the arrow is supposed to go. Now, um, so. Uh, we'll leave this line in here just to change the number to 24 for fun. But the question is asking, what is the difference between these two? P2 equals P1 or um, at P2 equals at P, the P1 equals at P2. We're gonna try one at a time and see what happens. And we're gonna do this once again in Python Tutor because I feel like that's the best place to, uh, to see things happening. You can print stuff out if you like, but I feel like being able to visualize all of the data makes a big deal. So we have I, J, P1, and P2. Let's take a look. So i is 12, j is 100, p1 is going to point to i, and p2 is going to point to j. So you can see these arrows are pointing to the different spots in memory. Now we want to set p1 to be 24, so it's going to make this 24. Okay, now let's look at this first line here, p1 equals p2. So what's that going to do? Maybe you can have a prediction in your mind, and then we'll see what happens. So we have p1 looks like that, p2 looks like that, and we say p1 equals p2, what's going to happen? Huh, well, let's look at exactly what happened here. It looks like now p1 has an arrow still, but the arrow is not pointing to p2, the arrow is pointing to j, and the reason for that is in line 11 here, what's actually happening is the value, quote unquote, uh, I guess no quotes, the value associated with um, p1 is the address of a variable in memory, an integer variable specifically. And so uh, when I want to change the value, that means I want to make a new, uh, put in a new address, something other than uh, what it originally was, which was the address of i. The value that's associated with p2 is the address of j. So when I run line 11, I'm saying take um, the address that's in here and make it what p2 is pointing to. And what p2 is pointing to happens to be j. So now they're both pointing at j. Now let's try this running the other line of code, which is going to do something completely different. So you set everything up. And now what happens when I run this line of code? Star p1 equals star p2. Well, look at that. It looks like it made i into 100. Why is that? Well, let's break down this line and see what it does. Asterisk P1 means take the arrow from P1 and follow it to its destination. And we reach it over here and it's pointing at I. Okay, take that and we're going to change it. Remember the equal sign is an assignment. And what are we gonna change it to? We're going to change it to what is being pointed to by the arrow from P2. So P2 is pointing at J. And so this line of code says, hey, whatever P1 is pointing at, make it the thing that P2 is pointing at. And in this case, that's 100. Now, what happens if we were to mix some of these up? Suppose, for example, I don't have an asterisk here and I just have this. Let's see what happens. Uh, looks like it won't even let me do it. <laughs> I was kind of curious if it would, but apparently not. Um, and why is that? And this is a very, very common thing you're going to see quite a bit, which is invalid conversion from int star to int. And usually what this means is that you missed an asterisk somewhere or you missed an ampersand somewhere. It depends. Um, but this is a very common error that I like to bring up just because it's very, very frequent. And it's uh, good to know that what this is essentially saying is that you're trying to take a um, somewhere where an integer should be. What's at P1 should be the value of an integer, 12 or 24 or 100. Uh, and what I'm trying to do with this line, which doesn't work, is give that what P2 is. What is P2? P2 is an address. It's an arrow that says, you know, go over here for stuff. If you want to actually see what that looks like, we can even print it out, uh, which I think we did earlier in the course when we, um, 
when we were covering pass by reference operators, but just so you can see, let's output the value of P2. Oh, sorry, I need um, this imports uh, IO stream and standard. There we go. Just so I can so print it out and see. Yes, I know how to fix the error. Run the lines of code and output. And what is the output? Whoa, what is this looking thing? So uh, I have mentioned this before, but just to briefly remind you, this is an address. This is a place in your computer where data is stored. And it refers specifically to the first byte of memory taken up by um, the data that I'm looking at. In that case, the what I'm printing out here is the address. Um, that P2 is pointing at. So FFF BCC. Remember these first two characters just indicate this is an address. Um, this collection of symbols here is the address representation of this, this box. Uh, this box has an address in memory and it happens to be that one. So the value stored in P2 is this because I need to know where is J in my computer. Uh, now, the other thing that it was asking was what happens if I change one of the variables? So let's say that I make int i a, um, or I'm gonna make int j into a float. Uh, will this be okay? Let's find out. 100.2, just for fun. Uh, it simply won't let me. Uh, once again, for the exact same reason. Any time that, or I guess, uh, Oh no, sorry, uh, my mistake. I was supposed to make P2 into a, a float as well, because it's supposed to point to a, um, a floating point number. So let's try that again. Oh, it does let me go. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Always good to experiment a little bit. So this time, um, same code, but I've made P2 and J into floating point numbers. So Here's my float. Note that it doesn't properly represent it exactly because the computer can only represent it up to such a point. All right, everything seems to be okay here for now. And note that, uh, look what happened when I tried to assign 100.2 to i, it only was able to store 100 because the box in here can't store floating point numbers, so it simply can't do it. Um, let's suppose I try doing things the other way around. Let's try, we won't do this. We don't need to print stuff anymore or reassign. Let's try doing P2, um, P1 equals P2. That's this line here. Just to clean it up a little bit. Let's see what happens. Uh, yeah. Ah, so there we go. That's what I expected is it doesn't work. So here is the same problem I had before, except before when I was trying to give an address um, to the space where an integer would fit, here I'm trying to give a address of a floating point number to something that should only take addresses of integers, and so it's simply not permitted. Now I can do the other way around, which we saw, uh, which is I can take what's at the, um, the locations and change them. which should do the same thing that we already saw and change it to 100. But I can't put in the address of J into P1. It simply will not allow me to do it. So very important to make sure that your pointers and the data that they point to are matching. And if you're ever trying to reassign different pointers, you have to make sure they're all the same type or it's just not going to work. OK, one more exercise, and then we will wrap it up. All right. So last exercise, write a function void swap nums that takes two integer pointers as parameters and swaps the values of the integers referenced by x and y. So uh, let's give this a shot. Uh, void swap nums, let's steal that. We will comment all this out because we do not need it. Remember, make this code. So x here you can think of as an arrow, right? It's gonna to point to some integer somewhere in my computer. Y is also pointing to a different um, one in my computer and I need to swap them. Now, we've learned how to do swapping before. Uh, we'll do it the, I guess, simple way. Uh, you can do it the like, quote unquote clever way with some addition and subtraction, but just to keep things simple. Um, now, I do need to temporarily store 
um, a numbers because I want to do a swap. So uh, a good way to think about this again, if you're not really used to swapping numbers, is, is pick two numbers in your mind that you want to swap and then, um, and then walk through the steps one by one. So let's say I want to swap the numbers uh, five and eight. Uh, good to pick numbers that are bigger just so that they um, stand out in your mind. So I want this to become eight, five. So at the beginning, I have five for X and eight for Y. Now it's not necessarily gonna be exactly five and eight when I run this, but it's good to have an example in your head so you can kind of piece together step-by-step step what's happening. Um, now, let's uh, say my temp, I wanna store uh, this five. Now, uh, I wouldn't do this because this is not gonna work. Uh, X is a pointer. It's not actually the number five. It's an arrow that points to the number five. So if I want to get to that five, I need the asterisk here so I can take it. Then I want to, um, to reassign what was there. So I want to take this five. So after this, um, temp is five. Now I want to take this five and make it into an eight. So this five is what's at x and I want to make that into an eight, which is what's at y. So now I have eight, eight, and temp is five. So I have eight, eight, and I just need to make this value into five. So this value, the one on the right is y, specifically what's at y, is now temp, and that's it. Uh, just to make sure this works, let's try running it. So we'll have int x is, why not, 5 and 8. Uh, y is, uh, actually I should not call these x and y, because x and y are my pointers. So I'll have number 1 is 5, number 2 is 8. x is going to point to number 1, and y is going to point to number 2. There we go. So now I have set up what I need to swap numbers. So I'll we'll swap numbers with x and y. Now, something to note here. <clears throat> if you remember from when we were doing pass by reference, any time that I wanted to permanently change a value, uh, say I wanted to change x permanently, I would use an uh, ampersand when I was passing it over because I wanted to pass by reference. I wanted to make it so that the changes made in the function would be permanent, would permeate throughout my code. So that later when I came back into main and wanted to do something, the changes were still there. Well, note that the values I'm passing, so I'm, this, is a, this is not pass by reference, this is pass by value, but the values I'm passing are not five and eight. The values I'm passing are the addresses of the five and eight. So if for some reason I needed to make these arrows point to different places, the change in where the arrows point would not persist once I leave the function. They would, be, they would go back to normal. However, what I'm doing in this code is not changing these values that I'm passing, but instead it's using those values to access parts of my computer in memory and change them permanently. So let's see it in action. We're gonna throw that back in a Python tutor. Let's make sure uh, I got my imports this time. Edit this code, throw it in. Uh, we're not going to need any of this stuff in comments, so I'll just get rid of it. Okay, and let's try it out. Okay, so number one, number two, x and y. So number one, number two, x and y. So uh, as we suspected, you know, we got five, we got our eight, x points to the five, y points to the eight, and we're going to run our function. Now, Let's see what happens when we start up our function. Look at that. We still have our original x and y in our main, but it's like kind of hard to see them even. Um, and they are pointing to the five and the eight. In our swap nums, because this is a pass by value function, we've given them copies of those addresses. So we have a different x here, which is pointing to five, and a different y here, which is pointing to eight. But the thing is, we don't actually care about these two variables. We just need them so we can reference this five and this eight and make a permanent change. In this first line here, we wanna store five to be our temporary variable number. So their temp now has five as we want. Then uh, we're going to follow this arrow, the one from X to its destination, which is five, and change that to be the other pointer. 
uh, the other pointer's value. Not the other pointer's value. The other uh, value referenced by the pointer. So it can get, you can see how this can get kind of hard even just to explain it. Um, I want to take what's at the end of the arrow from x and make it into what's at the end of the arrow from y. So this 5 is going to become 8, as it does. Okay, I got my 8, 8, and my temp is 5, so I just need to put 5 back in the right spot, which should be at the end of the arrow from y. And that's what I'm doing here. And take that and make it a 5. And look at that, there it is. Now I leave this function, but what happens when I do? Well, everything that was in my function, so the, the new copies of the pointers x and y, those are gone, they're erased because I'm no longer there. But Look what's happened. My 5 and my 8 are now 8 and 5. I actually did the swap, and it was persistent even though I didn't use a pass by reference. So this is an example of the power of pointers. We're going to see in, um, in the future pointers being used for a lot of different things, uh, and this is really just the beginning of the kinds of stuff that you're going to see with them. So try to do lots of practice with them. It's really the best way that you can get comfortable using the little symbols, whether it's ampersand, asterisk, and so on. Uh, and we'll have plenty of examples for sure in our upcoming labs and uh, lecture exercises. We'll continue more of this uh, in our next video as well because Pointers is going to take two lectures to cover. So I will see you there. Uh, make sure to do lots of practice and take care.